My name is Charles Jordan. I am a county commissioner. I've been a county commissioner for 21 years. I represent uh, uh, post three, which basically consists of Sapphire Island, Crescent, Illinois uh, area. And uh, my concern too is, uh, well, I have a lot of cons concern, but um, I guess I will address those later on. But uh, I just want to remind you about the, the fire truck. I am responsible for bringing that in. That truck came in uh, from eight to 10 years ago and it sat in Crescent for quite some time. I was trying to get that vehicle here and, and, and they just let it sit there. But two years ago, they put the legs in the way. Commissioner, you say they let it sit, who are you talking about? No, the fire, fire department. Okay. And, and they, they refused to touch it. The maximum cost. As, yeah. as, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, to make sure, when I brought it in, to make sure that no other entity get that vehicle, I kept it in my house for, the, um, for 90 days. It was wrong. When you talk about issues like fire service, I mean, you, you, you have a, a local government, you have a county commission, you serve a local government. Right. Uh, in most communities, either the county commission or the city council uh, has some responsibility for fire protection. So, <coughs> as it relates to that one issue, if you're alleging a, a violation of your rights, who is doing it? Is it the county commission or, or who, who's the responsible party? The county commissioner and uh, so the you're, you're, uh, you're, the volunteer order. Huh? Uh, what you are one vote. One vote. And there are four other votes. So if one and so but, but does my one vote go against four? Well, I mean I, I get this, I get the same question in, in, in my home city, Augusta. We have we have ten county commissioners. It takes six votes to accomplish something. It, can the four who lose every time they lose a vote and they come and get me to do the other six because they didn't win? It doesn't, the process doesn't work that way. Uh, if you're outvoted, you're outvoted. It may not be what you're outvoted for a wrong, you know, if they're discriminating against you because of the race. If, they, if they're trying to do something that's targeting African Americans or targeting women or targeting folks because of national origin, then that could be something that we can address. But, but can you can you can you can you structure it in a way that we can understand how we might be able to come in and impact what impact the situation? Give me one thing. Well, give me a the splice between the two thousand five. We came in with uh, this spot, with, uh, which is two thousand eleven, and um, in this two thousand eleven, I offer a motion that we um, give Sapphire Island a new fire <coughs> and, and uh, equip all the personnel. That didn't happen. That it was passed. It was passed. It was passed. The motion passed. The motion it passed. Had, 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 but the final analysis, they took it out. Somebody took it out. And we voted for the spot, but it wasn't there. Now, like I said, it was a fight to get that vehicle mm -hmm. over here because I was fighting the county commissioner and the uh, volunteer fire department. The fire, the, the fire department is the volunteer fire uh, department. Their constitution say that they must protect all of uh, Magnus County, uh, several Island included, but. The fire chief refused to give uh, Sapphire Island any food up until two weeks ago. Commissioner? Well, that's the enforcement part that we're talking about. So we're <laughs> going to ask, we're not asking you to come in and impact a county commissioner's vote. But when the commissioners vote on a particular policy and the administrative policy is not there, that's where the enforcement reference point becomes an issue. Mr. Hall, you
on part of the trust issue that relates to uh, employment discrimination? Yes, sir. And if you want, I can kind of fix my issue. Yes, sir. Uh, the first thing you brought up, well, one thing you brought up was about the pay rate of property management resources. We um, have a work share agreement with the agency called the Georgia Commission on Opportunity. And they are a uh, group called the Fair Employment Practices. We have those throughout the country, it's on the local, some of the state though. And basically, we enter in a work share agreement with those Fair Employment Practice Agencies, which allow them to do investigations that we were going to do. Uh, we only have one Fair Employment Practice Agency in Georgia, and that happens to be the Georgia Commission on Equal Opportunity. The only part they have relates to state employees. So if the person was applying for a job or a pay grade we're talking about that Department of Natural Resources, then that would be appropriate for the Georgia Commission to have that investigation now. Uh, you can contact me and I can put you in touch with them. Um, if there are any issues with what the Georgia Commission is doing, we have a state local, local coordinator who oversees those uh, fair and public practices out of our land office. So we can all get help with that. You also talk about not being enough job on Sacramento Island for um, by race. I guess the African Americans not being able to get jobs. Um, that's something that it depends on which company. Again, if you're talking about the DNR again, then that would be something that the Georgia Commission would have to handle. If we're talking about another private employer, for example, that's something that we can deal with. But we don't have jurisdiction if we're talking about an employer with 15 or more employees. So we got an employer, five employees, with three or four or five employees that's operating out here. We wouldn't even have jurisdiction in that area. So if you are talking, referring to a, a private employer or local government agency here that has 15 or more employees, um, then you may want to contact us and that's something that we need to look at. Can you also address the pattern of practice that it's not a matter of going and complicated what we have to show that discrimination was intentional and, and uh, I'm assuming that, that, that your allegation is that after America has been applying for these positions and have been systematically excluded for some, like some way or another oh, yeah. and, 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 and those kinds of things are actions. But just to, just to say that, that you know, they have a hundred employees and only three of them are, are African American, uh, that's not a, a, a standard for how it's the discrimination to be determined. Yeah. Well, he's not, he's not pointing to it as a standard. He's pointing to it as an outcome of the practices you just pointed out. <sighs> well, anytime we hear that there's an employer that we have jurisdiction over, and they got 100 employees, and only three are African American, or only three are female, that raises a concern with us. And that's something that we have to take and we have to look at. It. And um, if it's a situation where they're opposing these positions and females or African Americans, or people over the age of 40 are just simply not applying, there's never anything we can do about it. But they're applying for these jobs and not getting it. We have to look at it, and we look at it on two different levels. We look at the individual who may come up and complain and say, I didn't get it because of my race. But then we also look back over a period of time and see if this is a thing that's uh, what we would consider to be a class <coughs> for African Americans that are class, or females that are class, or any other protected basis that we deal with other class are being denied power to these positions because of their race or gender or one other basis. So we're focusing on the Department of Natural Resources at this moment. There's a number of jobs right now that have not been posted but are filled with positions. Okay. And That's we know that our family members have applied for these jobs. <laughs> one of our family members in this room has been applying since he graduated from high school and he's in his 30s right now, still so doesn't have a job at the department, but has a 100 ton captain's license. And the position on the boat that now is being put in front of everybody is not posted. At least I haven't found it. Have you found it posted? But we're talking about that 10 to 20 times over. Okay. And that's something that we have to get to the Georgia Commission. Let them take a look at. You mentioned um, the Dairy City Manager position and they're not posting that. Um, based on the laws that we enforce, they don't necessarily have to post it. Anytime we see a position in your field that is not posted, again, it raises concern with us. Now, uh, at the end of the day, they can't fill that position based on race, sex, color, national order, religion, or uh, any other basis that we're dealing with. So if you're aware of someone who may have qualified for that position and been interested and didn't get it, um, and they think that's because of their race or gender or one of the basis we deal with, and they'll even contact us, and that's something that we deal with because we're talking about local government here and not, not state employees. 
I'd like you talk about joy with power. Well, I just want to address that. My name is Loretta Sands, and I'm the Director of Public Relations for and also a former city council person. Um, that was kind of child says, and I think um, the, um, the United States attorney. attorney said that as an enforcement agency, their job is to enforce the laws, the administrative laws that are in the books. So the child says, if the position becomes available, it must be advertised for 30 days. They did not do it. So that's a clear violation. Am I wrong or right? Well, they didn't got the law that we enforced. So no, no, I'm just saying, I'm just, right. I'm just saying that, that particular. So they never gave anyone an opportunity to apply for that position. And um, there, Miami County has a history of skirting ordinances. Um, and so, when we look at the totality of discrimination, it would look broad based because they are just above what the law says. And so, because as Mr. Bartel says, the community does not have the resources or the finances to go to court to actually challenge, then we get the brunt of what's happening. And I think that's why we are all here. Exactly. And so, so those are our issues. Um, you know, that that is one. In order to go through the process with our agency, we don't need an attorney. They cost any money. Uh, in fact, you don't even have to come out. We can bid one of our charge questions here. You can bill it back to us, and that can start the process for you. And the entire process, all the way through the institution, <coughs> is something that we do with taxpayer money. Now, um, if we find a violation, then we have attorneys who work for the commission who will file cases in court to try to resolve it. We're not able to resolve it through a process called conciliation, which is a voluntary administration process that we use to, to resolve our violations that we find. But if we're not able to resolve it voluntarily, and our attorneys can choose to file suit on behalf of the person who brought the complaint to us. So all that again is paid for protection at all. Now, on the other end, if we go through and we don't find a violation, um, then we have to dismiss the charge of each of that person for right to sue. And then the and then you'll have to get your own attorney. And, and, and what, what, what you're referring to is primarily for individuals, but what I think you're describing is, and I'm not sure uh, it, it requires a lot more information, but if, if you're alleging that, that there's a pattern of practice among uh, county government, yes. uh, your elected leadership to, to ignore or to disregard uh, your, your city charter or your, your, your statutes or ordinances uh, in an attempt to avoid hiring qualified African Americans. Uh, there are cases where the Department of Justice will, will bring action against that, that entity. Okay. But, but as, as, as my assistant uh, will, will tell you, you know, we would have to have a lot more documentation. We have to have a copy of the charter. We have to, we have, to have the documentation showing those, those instances where that has happened over a period of time uh, to, to support a claim of you know, having practice discrimination. So it sounds like we got a couple of different avenues there. Because you can also, that person who's still discriminated against can come out of office and we can start an investigation on whether or not the person is dying to be. That's something that we need to look at class wide and see if they, they were not only denied a job for a specific department, but instead this is something that's going on throughout the local government. Yeah. Are you still the county clerk? Why not? It's an appointed position and at Georgia at will. Because the summary says that um, she um, had a position, uh, she was appointed by the commissioners after we dismissed another person. Um, and 